pleasure and privilege to welcome all of you all into this iconic banking hall so we want to be where our customers want to be whether it's cinema whether it is arts whether it's music whether it's sports and we are honored and privileged to have one of the most successful tennis players which india has ever produced and that's shri rohan bopanna so thank you rohan for being with us today speaking to rohan would be another illustrious person from the field of journalism and that's ayaz meman thanks ayaz for being here now before i actually invite rohan and ayaz to take the stage and start a chat show i need to introduce someone and invite someone to say a few words without whose help we would not have been possible to put this show together and that's mr riyad matthew so riyad may i request you to come up and say a few words so just uh, quickly uh, first of all welcome uh, thanks for coming rohan uh, ayaz members management of the hsbc and the important clients of hsbc uh, i was asked to speak about why the sports room and uh, so i just want to start with a small quote which i've got it is actually a quote given by uh, i won't say i is that a quote given by prakash padukone's daughter who also happens to be Deepika Padukone but since a sports event we talk about sports she says i think like an athlete all my road models are athletes i am inherently still an athlete there is no other profession that teaches you as much as sports does my discipline comes from my sports background so i that was the main thing when i asked and i started talking about sports room of course and we found we couldn't we couldn't find a better partner than hsbc who supports sports like was mentioned earlier so no more boring stuff from me let's hand it over to ayaz and rohan rohan let me start with with your achievement 43 years old when you went to australia you had done well in 2023 you had done well in 2023 you were number 2 that's right and then you go to australia you're 43 years old did age ever play this thing on your mind first of all uh, good evening everyone thank you so much for having me here today at the sports room and uh, thanks to hsbc as well for getting me here uh, i was looking forward to having this chat with you and uh, yeah t- uh, 2023 was a fabulous season finishing uh, number 2 uh, in the ranking and which i'd never done before so um, uh, yeah uh, the age was never uh, uh something uh, which ever worried me uh, one of the reasons being i think we set our limitations ourselves yeah. so the minute uh, i think everyone or someone around you tells you at 30 this is what needs to be done at 35 this is what needs to be done and at 40 it's yeah. it's all done and you know you need to hang up your boots i think when we uh change limitations into opportunities it's when you have a better perspective you yeah. know So at this juncture, I'm going to ask you a slightly prickly question, okay? Which is that you had Leander, you had Mayesh, they're doing extremely well, and there's a whole bunch of people you are included in that, and Sanya is there, and some of the other guys are there. But it always seemed that, you know, it wasn't smooth sailing, either vis-a-vis for the players, vis-a-vis the federation, or amongst themselves, the players themselves. Just you know, I mean, shed some light on that. I mean, I'll come back to your story and your journey. Yeah. But this has been intriguing me for a long while. So, any time the federation was involved in picking a team, we had an issue. Okay. <laughs> so you know, when there was no federation involved, yeah, it was smooth sailing. Yeah. Because, like a tournament, I'm going to now in Monte Carlo. Right. I enter it myself. Tennis now federation we... doesn't enter your tournament for you. No, no, no. Come, let me hear this again. Yeah. So, if the, you're going to Monte Carlo for a tournament, you're going on your own. On my own, I enter the tournament prior. The federation to doesn't give your name. Nothing, nothing. As a professional, you give your own name. Correct. So, when it came to Asian Games Olympics, federation had to do that. We can't do it on our own. Correct. So, hence that issue always popped up. Right. You know. No, so I the the clear point was that through the year, when you play ten months a year, you're doing it on your own. You're doing. You're picking your partner. This is like a. picked up then it's my choice you know whether i get my ranking up to number 1 i'm doing it myself so when it came to the team event or davis cup or uh, asian games or olympics yeah it is when federation now had to pick among the few and not knowing because they don't follow you through the year yes and it's just those three tournaments which they're coming into play so hence there was always a you know problem so i mean does it still exist in some way it still exists yeah. but only the uh, reason currently it's not there because they aren't three players 
Yeah. <laughs> there's, one, there's only one player. If those three players were there, I think it yeah. was still this going going to this Olympics. You would have probably still you know. Yeah. He, so he, he, it's no fun as an athlete. Yes. Rashmi, it's no fun. You don't want to be in that scenario, right? You just want to play with somebody, go for it. Because this is what who has made you is by you have picked your partner along that journey for this for that long a time and that is why you are who you are right you know and suddenly it's it's the doubles is like a uh, you know marriage yeah. and then when it came to uh, olympics and everything it was an arranged marriage it was a love marriage in the normal thing but during that time it was an arranged marriage and the federation decided who to go you should know with. because you had multiple marriages exactly you know, like exactly. the doubles players so. yeah you know just about indian tennis in the way we are uh, there seems to be a real paucity of talent strangely but not so strangely while we were talking a little earlier you mentioned why yeah. tennis hasn't really taken off now is it because the you mentioned about the federation not enough attention not talent spotting talent nurturing etc or is it because the barrier entry barrier is very difficult number one entry barrier is extremely difficult extremely difficult and second thing as a tennis player you need to fund your entire journey huh entire journey nobody is funding for you like, you know so it's like me starting my own company yeah i'm putting in the capital for years and years and not knowing whether i am going to make it or not so right so wherever i go today uh, to all these tournaments i'm paying for my coach i pay for my physio i pay for my travel so for anyone it's it's a it's a tough ask at the end of the day it it, it, it so it's how not do, uh, how does how does young talent get supported that is why we don't have tennis players because it is impossible and you know being number one in the world i can't play one tournament in the country i yeah. don't have one atp tournament in the country to play in so hence i have to take a flight outside and play are you going to be involved in tennis administration well that is the another thing which i'm trying to tell them they need sportsmen also involved in them Correct. just to understand or change this 30 years of uh, the same thing which is going on. something has to change in order to the sport to grow no so i'm asking you again is you know pushing you into i would a, love to be part of it suppose you are to become sports minister of india for a week one month one year whatever it is just become sports minister what are the changes what are the changes you would like to see to make india into a sporting nation with a sense of direction i think the first and foremost thing i would love to change is wherever there's an indian athlete representing their country in the world for their sport to be shown in the country telecasted and shown so that people know they are representing india yeah this is i think the number one thing which needs to be done and currently whoever the athletes are there to be supported and not really worrying who's not there we are more worried about who's not there yeah. like for tennis they constantly say why there no singles players that can only start with a structure in place so but if they can currently support who's there hence the next generation can follow through it you have had a lot of series of injuries now i'm i'm i want you to kind of spend you know dwell a little on this because these are quite serious injuries i say this because after, after i read about you i realized that i had suffered something similar the ligaments just kind of don't exist in the knees you going to have a replacement of your knees ah well uh, right now i have no cartilages on my knees cartilages. so eventually yes i eventually do need eventually you will have to have uh, it. need replacement on my knee so uh, back in 2019 i when i did an mri i got i had really uh, bad knee pain i was wondering what uh, so yeah, i was in stuttgart playing a tournament and the doctor said you know go do an mri i did an mri and then he said you know uh, especially my left knee he said there's no, no cartilage there it's bone to bone uh and my right also is pr- pretty bad uh so i was on 2 3 painkillers a day just to play matches every time uh, you know painkillers a day yeah i mean otherwise there was no chance for me even to step on the tennis court so end of 2019 i spoke to my doctor in bangalore and he said try this platelet rich plasma prp injections mm-hmm. and see how it goes so he said okay i'll give you the injections but the most important part is you do a lot of strengthening apart from it's not just you take the injection and you know you start flying on the court yeah. uh, so so after that i um, discovered ayangar yoga my one of my cousin sisters mm. she was uh, practicing yoga so i just generally called her and i told her you know this is my condition what do you think is yoga good she she said if you can find ayangar yoga yeah it will specifically help you 
you know, in this journey to strengthen, because I couldn't go to the gym or do squats or lift weights because it was extremely, extremely painful. Yeah. So, thankfully, during the pandemic, I got like four months at home, which, and which uh, in Iyengar tennis, yoga. and I started Iyengar yoga, three, four sessions a week, 90 minute sessions each session. And uh, it was incredible. I built a lot of strength on my legs. Yeah. Uh, I went from two, three painkillers a day. Today, I have no painkillers. Oh, that's you know, fantastic. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's… Uh, and I… Thank and God for yoga. What's been the lowest point in your, in your life, in your career? The toughest point was in 2021 because I'd never been through this situation ever in my career. I went five months in 2021 without winning a match. Five months? Five months. Every tournament I went, I lost first round. Yeah. You know, so I'm sitting in uh, Portugal. I lose another first round. I literally go near the ocean. I'm sitting. I love, I love uh, water. water yeah. uh, you know, so I'm just sitting there, uh, thing, and then I pick up my phone. I uh, uh, call my wife and I say, you know, I think it's time to call it a day because five months I have not won a match. You know, I'm. I mean, I've tried everything possible. I'm doing the practice. I'm doing everything. It's a new scenario. I've even as a junior, I never went. Five that months without yeah. without winning a match, it was very alien to me. Yeah. So as I was expressing this, you know, on on that uh, video call, suddenly I realized that I was not enjoying myself anymore. Hmm. I became in this rat race, thinking, "Oh, my ranking is going to drop. Then what am I going to do if I can't play tennis? What are my next steps back home? Am I set something up? Is there, you know, so yeah. many things around it?" And I felt. That is what was missing. That enjoyment of why I picked up the sport was missing. So the minute I realized that, okay. the very following week I made the quarterfinals in Madrid. Oh, okay. You know, I won't end up winning my so match from and almost then, chucking up everything to. Yeah. And also thanks to uh, you know my wife who said, if you want to quit, you, you know, yeah. you, are, you can quit, but don't quit when you're down. Yes. Where do you stand on this Geo AT issue? You know. I mean, uh, Fed, Federer, Nadal, Djokovic. What's the what's your take? I think uh, for me, uh, Rogers, uh, you yeah, know my uh, you know favorite tennis player. One of the reasons you having a single handed back end, but I really believe jo no, Djokovic is you know the best athlete out there. So now we are in a you know banking institution, the Hong Kong Shanghai Bank. So how are how are what's your relationship with money? Actually, it's been pretty good. Thankfully, I have uh, uh, got myself a family office to manage that part of uh, okay. my aspect, and I really feel you smartened up early in life. I think so. Yeah. yeah. We've got. I've got like seven, eight minutes for a few questions. If there are any from the audience. See, I've been an avid tennis player for the last uh, four decades, <coughs> and I've been seeing the domestic tennis. You know, it has gone down significantly since the seventies. My question is. Is tennis a dying spectator sport which is resulting in all of this or okay. what is it? It is not a dying spectator sport also because uh, uh, even in, uh, for example, if I take cricket, right? Cricket also is a spectator sport only for the elite players. We don't go and watch Ranji, right? Yeah. So, the idea is if you get Federer or Djokovic to come here, we have the spectators, right? Unlike in Europe or uh, US in the even a college system, everybody goes and watches this. There's 70, 80,000 people going and watching the sport. So the sport is there, it's just that we don't choose to go and, you know, watch the sport. As a family, we go to the mall. We don't go to watch sport. Unlike in the US or in Europe, as a family, we go watch the sport. So that culture is not built built here at all. We only want the celebrity of the sport, then spectators go and watch. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Rohan, for Thank being… You, uh, Thank you, Thank you so know, much. So, candid Thank you guys. and upfront yes. and uh, not ducking and weaving from any of the questions. Thank you, Rohan. Thank you, Ayad. I think that was very, very inspiring. Behind the grounds or off the grounds, the kind of effort and the logistics which goes I think that's something that was a revelation for all of us. So, thank you. I'll just quickly request the branch manager, Sandeep Sethi, to propose a quick word of thanks. On behalf of HSBC, extend my sincere gratitude to each one of you for being present here and gracing us at this captivating session. Um, Rohan, been wonderful to listen to you. 
the passion which you have for the sport the knowledge which you have shared with everyone today and as you said how you have in real life turned your limitations into opportunities is truly inspirational for all of us we'll ensure we follow that in our daily life uh, mr memon uh, you know what can i say about you thank you for the active engagement and ensuring that it is a thought provoking session uh, last but not the least a special round of uh, you know mention for our friends from the week without whose support this event wouldn't have been possible uh, thank you everyone once again and we look forward to inviting you for many such events in the future thank you, thank you.